Hello, um, my name is Rob Curry. I'm the CTO of the UCSC Genomics Institute. Um, I'm here to show you some work we've been doing with UCSF on publishing uh, health data, uh, in particular cancer patients' genomic data, onto IPFS and the blockchain. Uh, before I get to the demo of the actual pilot, um, let me give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, I don't know if anybody heard of BRCA1 and 2, um, Angelina, Jolene, Jean. If you have a BRCA variation, um, it means that you don't have a slightly elevated risk of cancer. You have a, a lifetime risk in the 70 to 80% range. So this is the kind of vanguard of genomic analysis and precision healthcare, because you can actually just find this out these days relatively cheaply. You can go online to color genomics, and for $99, spit in a tube, and about two weeks later, you'll receive a PDF in the mail that'll tell you whether you have one of these variations. Um, and this is what that looks like. On the left is the bad one you're gonna get. That's gonna say you have a pathogenic variant. Uh, the good news, though, is, is there's a bunch of things you can do to, to, you know, to deal with that. Um, but the thing I'm talking about here is the one on the right. The one on the left means there's a variant that we already understand and have already characterized. That's what Angelina Jolie received. The one on the right, though, is what's called a variant of unknown significance. That means that there's a variation in your DNA that we don't know what the hell it means, which is a really shitty thing to get in your email. Let's imagine you're a 22-year-old woman, your mother died of breast cancer, and your aunt has ovarian cancer. You believe you have a strong chance of getting cancer, and we've just told you that there's something going on, but we don't know what it means. Well, how do we solve that problem? How do we get rid of the one on the right to say we don't know? Through data. That's the, how the one on the left happened, is we found enough people who had that variation tracked their health outcomes over time. So if we can garner enough data, if I could magically look at a million or a billion people, there's seven billion of us and we all have DNA, we all share it. It's one thing that unites us all. If I could look at a million pieces of data, then I could identify if the one on the right is a problem. Today, one in 25 Americans have been tested DNA, mostly ancestry, but that's gonna balloon to your entire genome. So over the next five years, every one of you is probably gonna get your genome sequenced and you're gonna wonder what the hell it means. And we're gonna come back and say, we don't know what this means, we don't know what this means, and you know what this means. So why the hell is that the case? A million people, more or less worldwide, have been sequenced at this point, whole genome. But data is in silos for a variety of reasons, for sovereign reasons and for privacy reasons. Um, and so what we really would like in the research community, I work at UCSF and UCSC, is a network for sharing these data. I'd like to be able to, as a researcher or as your oncologist, to go in and sequence your tumor and say, oh, let me look at a million other tumors worldwide and see which tumor matches your tumor and see which treatments worked and which treatments didn't work. So we started a pilot uh, between UC Santa Cruz and UCSF to do just that. So patients in the oncology clinic are presented a consent to say, hey, would you like to donate your data for science, for research, and make it 100% publicly available. And we've done 13 patients so far. So this is real data. So, and for this crowd, the doctors, by the way, when I show them this, they're like, Curry, that looks like modem noise. You know, and I, I, you know, to break it to you, most of the medical community stops it when I say hash. They're like, what's a hash? Um, and by the way, in in the United States, it's against the law to use a hash on medical data and then publish that hash. That's what the politicians have put into law. So that's what you're facing, that's the bar you're on, right? But for this audience, I'm gonna assume all of you are like, hey, I know what that is. So this is a distributed application, ADAPT. You can go to it, cancergenetrust.org right now. It's, uh, we're running it on the test net, okay, baby steps. But all the data I'm showing you is real patient data. Uh, the, that's the Ethereum address of our contract. That's the IPFS, uh, IPFS hash of the top level data. And let me, uh, over here. Okay, so there's the real live running one. This, oops, it's uh, off the screen here, but this is a 61 year old patient with andiocarcinoma, I believe. 
So that's their medical record. So what we do is we pull their medical record and we de-identify it. We change dates to durations. We, of course, pull all names out. What we really care about is treatments, right? What treatment worked? And up here, you can see this is the genomic profile. That JSON file comes from a company called Foundation uh, One, recently purchased by Roche for $5 billion, by the way. And so what we do is we take that and we publish it as a JSON file into IPFS. Um, for those of you that know medical or biology, this is somatic variant, not the germline variant. We also publish their uh, images. So this patient at 1153 days, so 1,000 days from, from first contact, this is their CT scan of their tumor. And there's about 3,000 of those images up there right now for this patient at that time point. And here is after treatment, 1,253, 54 days. And here are the images from them. So we've got 13 patients up there um, with genomic data, some with imaging data. Uh, this is a start. It's a very early pilot, but this is, very, this is real data, and it's all sitting up in the blockchain. So if we can start to provide a way where patients are asked, um, and one of the experiments was to see if people would say yes, and almost all cancer patients are like, hell yeah. I mean, I want my data to be out there. I want to pay it forward. I want to find out if this can help somebody else. So to double click a little bit into that, you might be concerned about, oh, well, do I really want my genomic data on the IPFS blockchain? The answer is probably no. But what we're talking about here is not germline genome. So all of you have a whole bunch of cells in your body, I hope, and more or less all the cells have the same DNA. That's the DNA that you got when you were born. Cancer, though, is very different. When you have cancer, what happens is there's variations between your genome errors, BRCA1 and 2 is something that starts that process into motion. And if you go biopsy a tumor, you'll find that there's, it's basically chaos. Just all hell is broken loose. Now, what we really would want to do, if you're in that situation, in a perfect world, what you'd like to be able to do is walk into UCSF, have your tumor biopsied, we sequence it, and then we go search on the internet. And we go look all over the world for other people whose tumor matches your tumor. Right? This is kind of common sense, right? So if I could come back and say, hey, I found 500 people who have similar variations to your tumor, and we looked at their profiles, and we looked at treatments, and what worked and what didn't, and based on that, here's the top three that we should give to you. That would be awesome. Um, we're nowhere near close to that. The data sets that I typically work with as a researcher are in the 10,000s to 20,000. That's a big data set. Foundation and a company called um, uh, Flatiron was bought by Roche recently for $7 billion aggregate, and they had 30,000. That's a big data set. So, if data is the new oil, and remember, 20% of GDP goes to healthcare right now, that's a huge amount of money. If we can do this right and empower people to share their somatic data, right? So we're, we're to finish that prior thing off, we're sharing the details of your tumor, not your body. That should be unidentifiable then we can really turn this, and instead of genomic data being oil or money, it may be the new penicillin. Thank you.